Hello and welcome to this week's Australian Share Market Report. I'm Dale Gillam, Chief Analyst at Wealth Within. This week I'll be discussing the factors that affect currency prices, the All Ordinaries Index and this week's Stocks of Interest. Now before we jump into the report, I'd just like to mention that if you have any thoughts on investing or trading, comment below and be sure to subscribe to our channel to keep up to date. Now let's get into this week's report. We are reminded in the media every day that our dollar is either going up or down against other currencies. However, very few understand what drives their movement or how this affects the stock market. So let me explain. Currency prices are simply determined by supply and demand, or the amount of buying and selling of various currencies in the foreign exchange market, or FX market as it is known. Like a stock trading on the stock market, the price of a currency will fluctuate throughout the day on the FX market, with the forces of supply and demand determining whether the currency rises or falls. When there are more buyers, the currency will rise, and when there are more sellers, the currency will fall. But what drives this supply and demand? Let's consider the five factors that affect currency prices. Firstly, rises in interest rates in a country will result in that currency appreciating in value. It does this because a higher interest rate provides better incentives for individuals to invest in cash. A rise in interest rates will also attract more foreign capital into the country, and as a result, demand for the currency increases, which therefore will see the currency rise in value. Lower interest rates, on the other hand, means lower returns on cash investments, making it less attractive. This can result in a currency falling in value as investors move cash away from a country into other markets. The second factor is inflation. Countries that have lower levels of inflation cause a currency to appreciate in value as there is less money being injected into the economy. When inflation is low, the cost of goods and services will rise quite slowly. The opposite occurs when inflation is high, as the price of goods and services will rise rapidly. Increasing levels of inflation usually results in depreciation to a currency's value, and is often accompanied by higher interest rates to account for the extra money being brought into the economy. The third factor that will impact currency values is a country's balance of payments and debt between imports and exports and debt and foreign investments. If a country is spending more on imports than it gets from exporting goods and services, more money is going out of the economy, which often results in a currency depreciating in value. In addition, countries with higher amounts of debt are less likely to obtain foreign capital, which means that they will have to inject more money into the economy by raising inflation levels. The fourth factor is political stability. A country's political stability largely affects currency prices. A government with a stable economy is less risky for investors and ultimately a more desirable place to invest funds. Governments with strong economic and trade policies remove any doubt from the market and ultimately the strength of the currency. Instability in an economy, on the other hand, will likely see a currency depreciate as the risk of investing funds in that country becomes higher. The final factor that affects currencies is commodity prices. Countries such as Australia that are large exporters of raw materials are affected by movements in commodity prices. When commodity prices rise, countries who export heavily are likely to see their currency rise as they are getting more money in exchange for goods. The opposite is true of countries who are large importers of commodities, such as China. Higher import costs means the cost of manufacturing becomes higher and profit margins are squeezed. So there you have it, the five factors affecting currency prices. So now when you watch the news, you'll be able to have an appreciation of what might be happening in a particular country and whether it's good or bad for their currency. Stay tuned for my next report when I discuss how currency prices impact the stock market, as this will give you insights into where you look for stocks to buy and what to avoid. 
Just before we get into this week's stocks, I just wanted to get you up to date. I've been doing a lot of work upgrading our Trading Mentor course, which is our beginner or getting started course. For those of you who are interested in getting into the stock market and possibly interested in trading, get onto our website and have a look at the Trading Mentor course because I've upgraded all the information, freshened it all up, and it is a really, really great starting point for you. So remember to check out our website, wealthwithin.com.au. So let's get into this week's stocks. Okay, on your screen right now is a weekly bar chart of the All Ordinaries Index. And we can see a really, really interesting pattern here um, in terms of the last week, which is, as you can see, they're the week closing Friday the 19th of October. Now, we've had a big meltdown, I suppose, as a lot of people like to call it on our market. But really, is it a big meltdown? If I have a good look at it, and this is where you need to not just listen to the media and actually understand what's going on. And we can see as we blow it up, um, the high of our market was a 6481 back in August. Then we had one big week down where the market fell, then about three weeks up, and then obviously uh, a huge big fall this week here in the week ending 12th of October. And interestingly, looking at this, and this is stuff I teach in our trading mentor course that I mentioned just a little bit earlier, is looking at the bars and understanding what they're actually telling you. And, and the majority of people I know, and this includes lots of traders, they just don't even understand what they call short-term bar analysis. And just understanding the psychology of the market and what the market's thinking and what it's likely to do into the future. Because understanding short-term bar analysis really does help you understand what the market or a stock might do in the next week so that you can determine whether you're entering or exiting a stock. And uh, understanding market psychology does help you, especially the more short term that you are looking to trade. It's so constant. When I, we have a survey on our website now that anybody's looking to do, it's a 60 second survey. And interestingly, when people are filling it out, we've had it up there for a couple of weeks and had people filling it out and every single person having the same issue. I, know I can get into a stock, but I don't know how to manage it. I don't know how to get out properly. I don't know. I need to understand bar charts and some technical analysis. I need to understand how to read charts. And this is all this. And it's interesting how the majority, as I said, pretty much every single um, inquiry is, is the same thing. I, I don't have enough structure and strategy. I don't have a solid plan uh, in my trading. And yet we teach all of that in our trading mentor course. So if, uh, if you are um, looking um, to really understand how to understand markets, obviously the diploma is the flagship course and the one you should be in uh, if you're really serious about it. But if you're just starting out and you just want to dip your toe in the water a little bit and understand a little bit uh, about how to read these charts and what you need to be doing in a plan, then get into the trading mentor course. As I said, I've just fully updated it now. We're just uploading the last few videos or new videos um, again. So looking at this, it's it's the, the market is telling me that it's possible that we could have seen the end of the down move. And that's what it's telling me at the moment. And it may not. If we look at uh, that previous high and we look at to where it was at one point last week, it was down 8.82%. It closed down 6.77%. Now, generally, on a yearly basis, the market's going to fall between sort of 5 to 12% on average on a yearly basis. Every uh, four years is going to fall sort of more like 15 to 18%, sometimes a little bit more. And, and then every longer period, there's going to fall more like 15 to 25%. And occasionally we have those big hits where we get like the GFC where you get a 50% fall, but this is just a small fall. Um, and as you know, my projection um, for the fall really was down to this sort of level. If it does fall, it can go down into this sort of level here, 5824, that 38.2%. Although it is possible just to fall down to the 25% level, and it's already done that. Um, as you can see, that's fallen through 6051. And it's close high this week, or down on Friday, which means uh, we should start, see, this week we should see a green bar moving up or the market making high highs. Now, if it starts to move down again, this week, um, if we see a low close by the end of this week, then this 6824 will provide some support for it. And I think that will be the end of the move down before we move back up again. So is it, I know people say to me, oh, you know, with this move down, we're not going to see a new all-time high this year. We won't see one into the first quarter of next year. 
And a lot of people, uh, the thing is, a lot of people guess, and they, they really do a lot of people guess about where they think the market's going to be. I still think the market's bullish. I still think we're moving up. I think we'll be above that high by the end of the year. So that's 6481. I think we've got a good chance of breaking that high. Um, whether it goes through the previous all-time high, which you can see is right over here, uh, that's another um, question again, 6873. Uh, look, I don't think that's we won't get through that this year. I think uh, it's still quite possible we will make that by the end of the first quarter next year. But um, but at, that, that said, I'm still not necessarily thinking we're going to be bullish all next year. I think this next three to six months is going to be the bullish part of our market. I think by mid next year we'll be moving down into a longer term move down. Nothing major um, and I certainly don't think we're going to crash and the US market's definitely not going to crash. But uh, got a few stocks this week um, from a couple of people. We've got um, some sc uh, from Scott um, and then another stock from I think it's Ling Wen um, and they've got a few stocks for us to have a look at. As always if you want me to look at some stocks for you let me know and uh, I can actually bring them up and have a good look at them uh, for you and I'll just bring up that first stock. Now before I get into it remember you've uh, to hit subscribe button and a lot of people think you know subscribing to YouTube that you know it's going to do all sorts of things. Um, if When you hit that subscribe button it's not going to say let's send you all these um, emails to let you know when we're uploading videos. We don't contact you. We don't get your email address. We're not contacting you. We don't do any of that. Um, it just means that you like this channel and you want to see more of those videos. So when you do open your YouTube, there's a little tab up the top that just says subscriptions. And they're the subscriptions like when you hit the subscribe button to ours. So you'll be able to find all the videos that we've posted when you're ready to go and watch them. So they'll be there when you open up YouTube rather than you trying to go and find them and surf to us wherever we are. So it doesn't mean you're going to be contacted more or anything else like that. It just means it makes it easier for you to find the videos that you like to see. So if you do like these videos, um, please just hit that subscribe button now and subscribe to our, um, our channel. And that really does help us as well. Um, the first stock we're looking at is one from uh, Scott. It's called Mesoblast Limited. And I'll have a quick look at it on this monthly chart. And you can see here, that's the whole history of Mesoblast. And it pretty much spent most of its time going down with its all-time high back in October 2011. And it's one of these sort of volatile stocks that just keeps going down. And at one stage, you can see there it was down nearly 90%. Um, it does look like it trends really, really well in terms of, but it's been trending really well down. That Obviously, this upward move is very, very strong. And at this point in time, it's not. It's giving me signs that it is starting to move back up again. If you look at this area, it looks very similar in a pattern to this sort of area. It had a nice big move up and then to come down again. It's a nice move up come right down again. If you look at the move here that we're actually seeing from that low to that high, this is why people get interested in it. And uh, they see this 239% uh, move in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine months. And that's what people watch for. And, and this is where a lot of people get their big, big downfalls. They see a stock move up in a short period of time and then all of a sudden everybody's talking it on chat forums and everything else and, hey, let's get into it. But then the smart people are selling into that um, so the people that bought in early for that run and who knew what was going on in that run then start selling out into those people on the chat forums and getting all that, hey, meso bust 200% in the last 12 months. And what happened in the last 12 months is not going to necessarily happen in the next 12 months. So whilst it has moved up quite nicely in the last um, few months, and we can see again it was up 104%, to that stage there, now it's up 64% in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, that's 10 months again. So big moves, hard, much harder to get into because you need to be able to get in and get out. And if you're getting into this, how are you getting into it? How are you managing your trade and how are you getting out of this? So at this point in time, there are some rules around getting in and out of this. And at this point in time, if I was in it, I'd probably still be in it. Um, or I, I definitely would be in it. I wouldn't be exiting if I was in it at this point in time. But what I'd be looking at is if it keeps falling much further, it's now down half of what it rose in that period of time. Now, it's likely to hit at this point in time, I'd see it hitting 176. So if you're not in it, sit back and wait because it's likely to come down a lot further. This is a trading stock. And if you don't have good rules around it, you're going to be sitting there waiting for this stock. It'll take off and then you won't know to get out of it. And if you do get out of it, you'll be guessing to get out of it. And when you guess, then it might 
go up further and then you'll be kicking yourself that you didn't stay in it. But you might also get out on panic because it does fall a little bit only for it to see it rise again. So um, a little bit more of a tougher stock to trade if you don't have a lot of knowledge. Um, but again, as I said, if you're in it, I'd still be in it at the moment, but I'd be expecting it to fall you know, another 20% here because it's already fallen from that high there. It's using the wrong tool. Get rid of that one. Get rid of the right tool. That one from that high, it's already fallen 20%. It's probably likely to fall another uh, 28%. That's what I mean. It is unless you've got really good rules around this, your stomach's going to churn all of the time in this sort of stock. It's far better. And this is what I see the amateurs do or the people that have the least amount of knowledge tend to trade stocks that are, I won't say speculative. This is not a speculative stock, but it's not a highly liquid stock either. You're talking about, you know, it's 28 million shares at $2, so that's about $60 million it's traded in a week. So it's not a huge stock, but it's not a small, small speculative stock. But it is a stock that people see these big runs and then they go, I've got to get into it, where you are far, far better off. If you don't have a lot of knowledge, you're far better off on the top 50 stocks alone. That's it. And the thing is, it's it really is that way. And, and a lot of you don't want to hear that. And I constantly say this, I've been saying this for decades, if you trade easier stocks, and we'll look at one in a minute, you, it, you make your life so much easier because people see these big moves up, but you don't capture most of the move because of the lack of education that uh, you have. And that's, I'm not saying anything about Scott who's recommended this, I've got no idea who he is and how much knowledge or he has or he doesn't have, but as generally I see the people that trade the more volatile stocks because they see the move, not and they don't have the skills to be able to do the, um, actually trade that stock properly. So this is the next one. It's called Austal Limited. So again, quite a volatile stock, as you can see, big moves down. Its high was February 2007, um, and it's had these huge big moves. If I look at that price range percentage tool, you see it can move up very big again, 417%. And within two months, you'd lost um, 61% of that. Um, and so again, not a not an easy stock to, to trade um, unless you've got some really, really good solid rules around this. At this point in time, there's a lot of resistance around that $182 mark, sort of in between um, this $150 to that sort of $2 mark here right now. Until it got through that point, there are $2 that I wouldn't necessarily be interested in this stock at the point in time. If I was in the stock, I'm not sure where I would have got into it. I mean, I could get into it, um, but it's not really trending well. There's some, some reason why it's not wanting to go above this sort of level at this point in time. But um, right now, it looks like it's tipping over and may have some falls, but... It's not giving me that super bullishness and it's not really giving me that sort of signal that it's super bearish, but there is a lot of resistance around that sort of level at this point in time. So if we go and whack a little, um, just a pretty simple little tool around here, you can see that's a pretty solid level on this stock. That $2 level is a, is a really nice solid um, resistance level. And if we go down to the bottom, we'll see what we can find here and again a support level right through here. So at this point in time, I'd wait to see for direction. That's what I'm not seeing at the moment. That's why I'm a little bit, not nervous about it, but it's not, I mean, I don't own the stock, so it's not really a big issue to me, but it is looking like it's probably going to come back a little bit uh, from here. And you can see here, nice sort of bearish bar. And if you own this stock and you're looking at it and you owned it at one stage in the last three, four weeks, you're down nearly 16%. At the close, you're down 13%. So you'd have to be a little bit nervous about your trade. It's not looking super strong. But, and again, these sorts of things here, these, see these little doji, uh, little dojis here, all these ones where opens and closes are um, together that suggest to me it's a little bit more of a speculative stock, a lot less liquid. See all these opens and closes together. This is all that short-term bar analysis I was telling you about. It just tells me that this stock is not super highly there's not a high participation rate in here and again look at that 100 and sorry 866,000 shares at a dollar 80 so that's 1.6 million dollars it's on the lower end i wouldn't even personally i don't touch this sort of stuff because it's too low um in terms of you want stocks that are going to give you a more volume in them so you can get much more steadier patterns and easier trades um, all too often the people with the least amount of knowledge make their trading much harder by going for more speculative stocks hoping they're going to get more of a run. Interesting stock, this one, this one was by, as I said, uh, the lady, I think it's a lady, I'm not sure, Ling Wen, it might be a gentleman, I'm not sure, so, um, but um, it is called RCR Tomlinson.
Now, this stock, you might see the first thing I noticed was this huge gap from this July here where it closed at $2.12 and then here it opened up at $1.05. And if we go to the day chart, which is here, so I've got the day chart here, it closed there at that $2.12. And that, you can see there's a Friday the 27th of July and this one here opened up on the 30th of August at $1.05. Now that sends alarm bells to me straight away to go and have a look and see what actually happened because A, there's a couple of things that could happen here. One is I'm missing data. Um, so missing data for for that four or five days because remember we've got the 30th of August, sorry, not four or five days, a month actually, um, four or five weeks, sorry. Um, you're looking at that and saying, well, maybe I've missed a whole month of data in maybe not. And uh, when you go to the ASX website, so just type in RCA announcements ASX and it will come up with the ASX website and it will show you. So you go back to those dates and this is what I look at. So I went back to July and the, the announcement was it went into a trading halt pending an announcement. And that announcement came out in around here and it said they were releasing a whole lot more shares at around a dollar. So what actually happened fell out of bed basically um, in terms of share price. So that's really what happened. And you can read all the announcements and uh, 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 if you'd like to do that. And it's a really good place to do. If I see spike volume or if I see gaps on these sorts of things, uh, then to me it's one of those stocks I do actually look at the announcements to see exactly what happened and again this is a very similar stock in the last sort of ones that we've actually looked at where you see these huge moves over short periods of time so there's 327 percent between January 2016 and September 2017 so about 18 months ish 19 months 20 months whatever that is but huge huge moves but then you pretty much lost it all haven't you or it's gone south and so how do you trade this stock just because it moves you need to determine how what your entry is what your exit is and how you're actually going to manage it i know how i would actually trade this it's um i'd actually be able to trade this quite well actually it's quite a nice looking stock but it's not highly liquid and you can see here twenty six thousand the twenty six million shares at two dollars so that's about fifty sixty million dollars of trading there um, this one here, 22 million at a dollar. So, you know, not huge, but not super, super small. So let's have a look at the weekly chart for a bit. Um, looking bearish to me. It doesn't look super strong at the, more, at the moment to me. We did get a lot more volume coming in as soon as it dropped. And obviously there's a lot more people getting out of it at this point in time. Um, again, right through here, you can see very low volumes, 278,000 um, shares. So not huge volumes here. And again, it's not something I would look at properly myself at this point in time unless it really gets back up over this dollar area here then I wouldn't even be looking at it at this point in time too many people try and bottom pick and uh, try and pick the very low price stocks like this you know picking them up thinking well if it goes from 90 cents to a dollar 10 or dollar 20 I've made 20 percent on my money pretty quickly but really I'd rather leave money down on here to get the safe money in here and what I'm talking about here if I use a specific tool is my trend arrow let's let me look at this I'd rather see this sort of stuff happen oh sorry missed it let me put it on again I'd rather see this sort of stuff happen repeat um, go here go here go here and miss all of this bit see this little bit and we'll see that it's got strength and then get in around here and you know yeah i'm going to be missing 20 or 30 percent off the bottom but this part here is going to be really safe money and my money needs to be safe uh, because if i'm trying to get it on down here the opposite might happen in that this might do that and then we're off the board and we're going down further this is what too many people actually do so right now um, I'd be staying out of this stock if uh, uh, at all at, at all cost at this point in time here's a great stock now look at that totally different ball game big stock aristocrat leisure you know yep oh sorry no I want my trend arrow tool I want the other one let me click get out of that and we go to my other tool if you look at this from this low in 2011 through to this high 1658% you know and people say you can't make money out of these good blue chip stocks pretty quickly 148% from November 2016 to July 2018 so pretty good returns nice and steady no panics no stress that sort of stuff and it, it is quite a great stock to trade looking quite bullish it's had a bit of a pullback over the last few weeks which is giving us opportunity now to have a good look at this stock and saying well it's moved down a little bit and it's moved off roughly you know what the market it's about 18 18 and a half percent so at this point in time it is looking quite nice and so if we don't do do start to see it moving up again there could be a nice little move up 
through that all-time high. We just need to be a little bit too early at this point in time. I think we need to see whether it's going to hold up uh, around that sort of level uh, or whether it's got further to fall. But um, it has fallen that 38.2, but it could fall down to this 50%. If we do see a little bit of a move down here, um, then it will be a even nicer trade when it starts to turn. But I think it's probably gone a little bit heavy here in terms of its run at 227 range. Um, last week, I think this week we might see a bit of an inside bar. It probably won't be as fast moving up at this point in time. But again, looking good. Um, that's it for me for this week. As always, put your um, stocks down below. Just type them in, whatever you want. Uh, if you've got a question for me, please post it. I'm quite happy to answer. And again, remember, subscribe to the channel if you like. Yeah, just hit like right now on the video because the more likes and the more subscriptions we have, the better it is for everybody. Um, and remember to share the videos with your friends, you know, and tell them, tell them all about it and share it around there. So again, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'll talk to you next week. Take care. What are your thoughts? If you've got any questions, please comment below. Go and listen to our Talking Wealth podcast. They're available on SoundCloud and on our website. Now they're jam-packed with valuable information which will help you elevate your trading. Now if you're serious about learning to trade the share market and you'd like more information about our courses, please click the link in the video description below. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you've liked the video, remember to subscribe to keep up to date. I'm Dale Gillam, the Chief Analyst here at Wealth Within. Goodbye, good luck and good trading.